All right, so presumably you've solved it, uh, which means that uh, you kind of got the trick of it. Uh, for those who did not get it correct, let's go through the, the example. So now we have a tax on producers, right? So I uh, find the original. So do, 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 do. So we have P equals, before it was 8 plus 3QS, and P equals 32 minus QD, right? That's the original, oh, ew. Sorry, 40 minus QD. That was the original equation before any tax. Tax on producers. Okay, so what happens? The supply curve should shift up. Supply shifts up by the amount of the tax. So four dollars. So P is now equal to twelve plus three QS. Oh, I'm sorry, I have this on ridiculously low font. Is that better? I don't know why I'm asking. Nobody here is here to give me feedback. <laughs> um, so now you have a tax on producers. Supply shifts up from 8 plus 3 QS by 4 to 12 plus 3 QS. Okay. So now we want to solve P equals 12 plus 3Q, and I'm going to call it 3Q prime. Let's say P prime. And that is equal to? 40 minus Q prime, and then we just solve the system of equations. Okay, so subtract 12 from both sides, I should get 28 is equal to 4 Q prime, and then divide both sides by 4, you get Q prime equals 7. That looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? 7, that's weird, huh? Let me get my big old head out of the way. All right. Um, all right, so Q prime is equal to 7. What about P prime? So let's find P prime now. So 12 plus 3 times 7 equals 21 plus 12 equals 33. And double check that. P prime is equal to 40 minus 7 equals 33. That kind of looks a little familiar too. What do we get above? We had 29 above, but now we're getting 33 and 7. So that's a little familiar, but it's not quite the same, right? So here's my graph. There's my Q. There's my P. Intercept is going to be 40 originally. And this is demand. And the original, let's start with the original supply curve is 8, K, okay. and now the new supply curve is going to be plus 4, this is going to be 12, okay, and we said that this intersection here is the new equilibrium price of 33, okay, so the producers charge 33, but then they have to pay the tax, so this is going to be my pecans. Pecans. Little does he does she know that the, the cat's in the bathroom. That's what she's looking for. Okay, so you have pecans here. Okay, it's 33. The price that producers actually receive per good, P prod is going to be 33 minus the tax. So the tax is 4, so 29. That's going to be my P prod. Okay. So that looks mighty familiar now. So you have a P cons of 33, a P prod of 29, an equilibrium quantity of 7. 
Huh. Where have we seen this before? Well, gee whiz. If we go up here, what do we got? We got a uh, P prod of 29, a P cons of 33, an equilibrium quantity of 7. We have the same thing. This is the same exact graph. Just the only thing is that we shifted supply up. I guess I never labeled that supply prime. We shifted supply up instead of shifting demand down, but everything else is the same. Okay, this was this equilibrium price was still 32 from because that that part's not changed. This is eight. Okay, uh, you know this is still going to be your A, right or whatever it was. It's still going to be your consumer surplus. I guess it was E, but at any rate. So all the numbers are going to be the same because everything is the same. The only difference is that we shifted supply up instead of shifting demand down. But the whole system of equations, ah, geez, Louise, the whole system of equations leads to the same exact conclusion. Okay. If we were to cut this graph, you know, a little more precisely. So boom, 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 boom. boom. So this is going to still be your producer surplus. This is your producer tax burden. This is your consumer tax burden. And they're all going to have the same exact coordinates. This is your consumer surplus. And this is your deadweight loss in this triangle here. Sorry about the disgust, <laughs> the, the fact that I went over. Um, but your deadweight loss is going to be this triangle, this triangle. The, or this triangle or these two triangles, depending on how you conceive it, but between the 7 and the 8 over here. Okay, so it's the same exact graph. Same exact picture, just different, just supply shifted instead of demand. So what, why, why did I do this? First of all, is this always going to be the case? Yes. If the tax is on consumers or if the tax is on producers, it doesn't matter. That's why I did this. Okay. Essentially, instead of adding four to the supply equation, we subtracted four to the demand equation. Everything else stayed the same. Um, but uh, and that's always going to be the case, no matter whether the it's the supply, or whether it's the producers or consumers being taxed. Um, so why is that? Well, mathematically, if I had the same same equation here, right, and I add four or subtract four from one side or the other, it doesn't really matter. The p is going to change, but it. It's a P for an intersection up here, or is a P for an intersection down here, right? Before we had the demand curve shift down, and we had this intersection. Now we have the supply curve shift up, and we're intersecting here. But it, because there's a P cons and a P prod, it doesn't matter. It's 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 irrelevant. Intuitively speaking, though, why why doesn't it matter? Because you would think that it would matter for producers that. Um, that they're that the fact that they're paying the tax, I would think, like intuitively speaking, uh, that their tax burden will be relatively higher. Well, no, because what 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 was the producer response? They're just increasing the price. They're passing at least some of it onto consumers. Okay, just like consumers were decreasing their willingness to pay, so they're passing on a price decrease essentially onto producers. Okay. So neither party fully bore the, or fully bared, fully, fully bore, <laughs> I don't know. Neither party fully paid the tax burden. They both passed part of it onto, uh, onto the other party, whether it's consumers or producers. You know, regardless of who's paying, consumers and producers are still going to have the same tax burden. Okay. So what ultimately decides tax burden is how inelastic demand is relative to supply. Okay. So if demand is like, super inelastic, but supply 
is super elastic, okay, and we shift the supply curve up, I hope I said that demand is super elastic, supply is inelastic. I'm not sure if I said that earlier. If I misspoke, supply is inelastic in this case. It's very steep. Demand is elastic. Okay. Look at this massive tax burden right there. Ooh wee. All right, so this is consumer tax burden, this little guy here, CTB. This whole big guy is your producer tax burden, okay? Because the supply curve is inelastic and the demand curve is elastic, what that's basically saying is if the producers raise their price, demand is going to shift way in. Quantity demand is going to shift in, I should say. Right, a small price increase shifted the quantity demanded very, very like highly in right. Whereas the suppliers, you know, they're they're inelastic. They're they're kind of constrained to uh, supply the same amount. So, uh, you know, a, a, a price change is, is not going to have the same effect on them that it did for demand because demand had a very large responsiveness to it was very price sensitive supply is not very price sensitive if you increase this the price for supply from like uh from, let's say you had a demand curve intersecting here right so you increase the price a lot but the quantity of demand is, or the quantity supplied is only going to shift a little bit so suppliers know that so they're not going to be willing to pay uh like a whole ton more just because the producers had a tax. Even if it was a tax on consumers, it doesn't matter, right, from the exercise we just showed. But because supply is relatively inelastic compared to demand, producers are going to bear a much bigger tax burden, okay? So to wrap this all up in a nice, neat little bow, whether... Whether the tax is on consumers or producers does not matter. Producer and consumer tax burden is determined by who has who has the lar the more inelastic or I should say less elastic. Uh, less elastic supply demand curve. I, I should guess I should say who has the less elastic curve. If supply is less elastic than demand, QS, so uh, consumers won't stand for a price increase, right? Because they're very price sensitive, they're very elastic, so their demand should shift in at a, even a small uh, price increase. So producers must bear the larger share of the tax burden, okay? All right, um, I think that's it with taxes. Let's go back to the slides, but I think that's it. Okay, so it doesn't matter who pays the tax, the burden is the same. This is universally true with all excise taxes. The less elastic supply is relative to demand, the more producers bear relative to consumers of the tax, okay? So the uh, so producers had a steeper curve, right? Their slope was three. 
versus demand, which, whose slope was uh, one, negative one. So consumers essentially had, th- uh, producers essentially had three times steeper, a three times steeper slope or three times more elastic, less elastic supply curve than the demand curve. And they also tend, they also had three times the um, producer burden versus consumer burden. Okay. It's not always going to be so neat, nice and neat that it's going to be three times because the slope is three times, but um, in this case it was. Okay. So let's stop there.